Now, Darrell, I believe one of the more high-profile members of the Great Australian Party is Pete Evans, who many people, at least within Australia, would know as a celebrity television chef or a former television presenter. Can you tell us a bit about his involvement within the Great Australian Party, how he came to be joining forces with you and what his aims or intentions are in the short term or maybe even in the long term as well? Yes, thanks for the question, Robert. It's Pete Evans has come to us um, as a result of some social media um, access. Uh, he then looked at what the Great Australian Party um, stood for and had um, quite some, some lengthy discussions with Rod Carleton, um, the party leader, and he made up his mind that that would be a good um, next step for for his um, his public profile. Not only that, but he felt there was a need to get the information out that the Great Australian Party have uh, and a need to help the people of Australia um, better understand what is actually going on in this country behind closed doors. And that, that need, I mean, he pretty much ticked all of the boxes that we require um, uh, with respect to a candidate. Um, to step up and, and he s insisted that he is just one of the team um, for the Great Australian Party and uh, he's as down to earth as you can possibly get um, you know we've got a lot of confidence in Peter and his um, I believe that he will be a good politician um, and it w he won't be a typical politician and that's that's another thing with GAP. We're not typical politicians. We're just people. We're down to earth people who have bothered to sit down and study the law and go, hang on, there's something wrong. Something's crook and tell a rook. Uh, we need to fix it. And he's just part of that team. And uh, he's happy for us to um, promote him as a member of that team. Um, but uh, he's most definitely a voice that we listen to, equally to every other candidate that stands. Are there any particular platforms or issues that Pete Evans feels strong about? He has been, I suppose you could say, somewhat misrepresented or misportrayed or maybe even a little bit targeted by mainstream media as of the as a result of the changes he's been through and as a result of some of the things he's been saying publicly. I know he attended an anti-COVID lockdown protest in Hyde Park in Sydney several weeks ago and generally speaking the mainstream media reporting on his speech, his behaviour, his activities at the protest and his reasons for getting involved, he's been somewhat lampooned. But he, does he have issues that he's that he feels particularly strongly about? His passion really is um, a lot around the health um, issues um, as, and that entails good cooking of course um, and good behaviour in the kitchen but of course um, what we've been experiencing around the world uh, in the last 12 months um, he's he's got very strong feelings towards and, and he's seen how there is there's something wrong uh, with the way the system has portrayed this whole um, this whole um, virus business, and uh, he wants to get the truth out there with respect to um, what's actually been taking place, and this is why he's resonated so well with the Great Australian Party is because we've just. We're just standing by what the Parliament has prescribed. The law is very clear with respect to how government must perform when we're, we're faced with a um, quarantinable disease. Um, and uh, he's been um, passionate towards promoting that sort of um, awareness 
out to the general public so that they then can make the informed decision as to whether what government is saying is true or not. Uh, he's, he's voicing what GAP is voicing and what we've been saying this whole time. Government seem to be advising us outside of what legislation prescribes. And of course, rather than um, say, oh, he's a bad person because he's done um, terrible things or whatever, uh, we want them to answer questions with respect to the legislation that they stand by and th it's their job. They are not promoting what the legislation prescribes. Um, they say that this so-called vaccine is safe. Is that true? It's all good and well for the Therapeutic Goods Association to say it is, and yet the manufacturers of the vaccine say otherwise. Why isn't the voice of the manufacturer being promoted? There seems to be a, a, a vast gap between what is written down on paper, be it a prescribed law or whatever the manufacturers prescribe, to what the reality is. You know, the government, is, through their different spokespersons in each state as well as federal government, are saying, yeah, this is all safe, it's all good. Um, they say you should stay home from work um, because of this disease. Well, where in your legislation have you got the power to do that? It's never happened before in the past. All of a sudden, this, this power has come out of nowhere. Please answer the question, but people aren't doing that. They're just prescribing to whatever they're told over the mass media. Therein lies one of the heads of this beast that we're confronting, is the mass media, well and truly ignoring the um, putting up both arguments in front of the people so they can make an informed decision. So, yeah, <clears throat> he's promoting what GAP is promoting, which is truth. And what does has the parliament prescribed? I think that's crucial for all of us to um, grasp and understand.